Welcome back and in this session we are going to learn about the distributivity of multiplication over addition. Now in order to demonstrate what do we mean by distributivity, I'll have to take a very simple example. Let us say that I want to multiply two numbers and uh, yeah just let us take two numbers as 6 by 8. So I want to multiply these two numbers. So, so what is 6 by 8? Now we can do this in one of the ways in which we can do this operation, this mathematical operation, is to do it in terms of squares that we get. So let us say that 6 by 8. So let's take 6 rows here. So we start from here and go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6. So here we have this 6 squares and by 8. So I'll take 8 towards this side. Okay. So these are 3, another 3 here and 2. Right. So this is 6 by 8 and I can complete this rectangle by joining 6 more over here and then joining these 8. Now it is like 6 so when I say 6 by 8, 6 multiplied by 8, it, it means 6 rows repeated 8 times. These are the rows. So let me just write the row numbers here. Um, these rows will be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6. And if we take the columns, the columns will be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 and 8. So 6 rows and 8 columns. Now if you count these, right, they will come out to 48. This is going to be your answer. 6, 8 and 48. Now let us have a look at this in a different way. So what I am going to do is, I will split this, this columns, right, I will split this into two parts. That is, I would let's say that uh, I would like to split this in a group of 5 and 3 here. So I have just split it into 2. So we have one portion here which is this yellow colored portion. This is one portion that we have here and the other portion that we have is this, this one. So this has only 3 columns and this has only Five columns. Now, how do how, how can I write multiplication for this? This, since since we have already six rows over here, so for this I can write as I can write as six multiplied by five. Okay, and this is, if we count here, I get thirty. Whereas this here that we have it's 1, 2 and 3. Right? So we have 3 columns here. So in order to find out the number of squares in this partition I can really say 6 multiplied by 3 and the result for this if I count I will get 18. But now if we add I mean we know that these total columns here there are 8. 5 plus 3 is 8. Right? So uh, let's say if I add the number of squares here and I add the number of squares here that is I add 30 plus 18, what do I get? I get 48. Now, this is the same result 6 8 are 48, and this is also the same result. But what does this imply? If I break this down, if we have a look closer look at this, what we have done here, we have multiplied 6 by 5, this product, and then we have added this to 6 by 3, or equally. I can write it as 6 multiplied by 5 plus 3 or it could also be written as 6 multiplied by 8. So what we have demonstrated here is that if we have a product of two numbers and if we represent one of the numbers as a sum of 2, in our case it is 5 plus 3, right? In that case you can distribute this multiplication over this addition. So if you see what we have done, we have multiplied 6 by 5 and then we are adding and then we are adding that to the other multiplication that is 6 by 3. 
655 plus 655. So now this property is called as the distributivity of multiplication over addition and it's a very very useful property. Now let me give you a very very common example. A common example where we use this even without being aware that we, we, we are using the distributive. For example, let's say that we want to multiply two numbers. 25 needs to be multiplied by 25. How do we proceed with this? So first, we multiply 5 with 25. So the result of that is 125. Okay. And then we multiply 25 by 20. So we get 500. 25 multiplied by 20 and when we sum this up the result will come as 625 now how can I write this 125 it's nothing but 25 multiplied by 5 and this result here is nothing but 25 multiplied by 20 so what essentially we have done is we have written that 25 multiplied by 25 equals 25 multiplied by 5 plus 20 so we have broken the other part other other 25 into a sum of 5 and 20 which then we can write as 25 into 5 and then we can also write 25 into 20 and this will lead us to our earlier known product 125 plus 500 which gives us 620. So this is a most common example of the distributivity of multiplication where we use it but we did not know that we have been using distributivity of multiplication. So there are several other interesting uh, scenarios that you could be using the distributivity property. So let us take a couple of examples. For example, um, you have to calculate a product, let's say 12 multiplied by 35. Now you can use the distributivity property in this product to simplify your calculations. So you say 12 and break this 35 into, into a sum which will make your calculations very easy. So we can take 30 plus 5. Okay, now this equals to 12 into 30 plus 12 into 5. You can take any sum which sounds convenient to you. So 12 into 30 is 360 and 12 into 5 is 60. So what we get is 420. Now this is a very very fast answer rather than doing the direct multiplication here. And other scenarios in which you can use this is when you have something like this, you have to multiply 126 by 55 and add this product into a sum into a product of 126 multiplied by 45. Now here again I can use the distributivity property and I can write as 126 multiplied by 55 plus 45. Now it's very really simple to add 55 plus 45 and we know that that is equal to 100. So my answer is simply 12,600. So these are the two examples in which we saw how do we apply the distributivity of multiplication over addition. So we bring our lecture to end. Thank you and see you soon.